So this is gonna be part two of the CNC build. In the last video, we built this. If you missed that, go check it out. So the last video, we built our raising and lowering bed. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on building the X and Y gantry and the laser mount. So hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have basically a working CNC machine minus all the nerd stuff. So let's get right into it, man. Here's what we finished in the last video. In order to continue on this build, I'm gonna need to take just about everything we did last time apart so I don't damage it with welding spatter. So, I'll be back. So in the interest of getting all the welding done before mounting the linear rails, I'm gonna put the laser mount together. So I got these parts, you know the drill. So this rail is gonna be where the laser is gonna mount using these 3D printed parts. And of course, just to make my life a little more difficult, I didn't drill or tap these before installing it. So we're gonna drill and tap these sideways. All right, now that that's finished with, linear rails. So this is the type of linear rail I'm gonna be using. The, uh, well I guess rail type. I wish I had a good smart explanation as to why I want to use these but the reason is because they were cheap. These will mount on top of each side like so. The one downside to using these rails is just look at all the holes in the thing man. I'm gonna be here all day breaking taps. That was amazing! Wow! Here comes the moment of truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that! All right, that's one rail down. On to the next. Ta-da! So I squared these up just using a tape measure so they're not perfect, but we can refine them later because these screws are a little smaller than the holes. So all we had to do is get it in the ballpark. Now we can build a gantry. And again, I want this to be very, very light. So aluminum it is. So I kind of want this gantry to straddle the linear rail. And I couldn't find any C-channel big enough. So I got this two inch square tube. I'm just gonna cut a side off of it. Like so, that's not so bad. To get the holes in the right spot for the linear bearings, I've printed out these templates that just have the center point of each hole marked. And I'll attach these with the glue stick. Let's see if I did my math right. Look at that, it's like money. We got this guy going. Let's do the other side. I feel like this whole video is like, so we did that, let's just do it four more times. Sorry, it's a very repetitive process making one of these machines. So as you can see here, I've gotten both these little blocks on my linear rails and I measured across and 24 and 3 8 seems to be the distance. Bet you've never seen rusty aluminum before. Let's take all this apart and weld this thing on. So we've got this piece all welded up. Now we mount our linear rail. I mean, what, what's one hole missing? What's one out of 22? five percent failure rate i'm cool with that so i've kind of just been sitting here staring at this thing figuring out what the next move is going to be and i think i gotta wait till the hardware store opens so that i can figure out what size standoffs and whatever i'm going to use so in the meantime we need a mounting point for the cable chain that's going to carry the wires for the x-axis and the air tube. I think I'm just gonna weld this little drop on here and have a couple mounting holes for a piece that will go underneath the frame. 
So here we have our very professional setup. I've zip tied the trigger and I can turn the bandsaw on with the switch for my workbench. And you might be thinking, didn't you build a bandsaw? The utility of the bandsaw I built did not justify the size of it. And having a small workshop, every square inch counts. And those square inches just didn't count enough. Whoa! So for now I'm stuck with teeny tiny bandsaw while that one rusts on the side of the house. Back from the hardware store. 30 bucks for a bag like that size. This is like weed prices, man. The game plan now is we need to mount some more stuff on top of these. So I'm gonna use these little coupling nuts as standoffs and have another plate sitting on top. Just like that. Now we gotta make our plates that go on top. So the first plate that's going on these standoffs is going to be for the stepper mount and also for a mirror mount. So, once again, we're going to use the patented Matthias Wandel method of making precise parts. So here we have the plate for the stepper mount. And also, there's a little extra space here for the mirror mount. So that goes on that guy. The other side is just gonna get a little extendo plate that I can mount the belt tensioner on. To do that, we're gonna use some of this C-channel, which fits the pulley pretty good. Gonna need some spacers in there, but I think that's good enough. We're gonna have it attached to a block cut out of here with two bolts that we can tighten up to tension the belt. I went ahead and made the plate that'll go on the standoffs off camera. So that goes there. Now, I think we can clean up this mess of a workbench and get this thing installed on there. Ta-da! Here we have all the parts that we made so far stuck together as one, but it all seems to slide pretty good. There is a sticky part in the middle. I don't know if these rails are warped or something, but otherwise, I, I think I'm gonna ignore it. So now, we need to build our gantry for the x-axis. And that is just gonna be another piece of two inch square tube with the bottom cut off, stuck on top of there. I've already wandelled it, so let's get those drilled out. So this little piece here is where we're gonna attach the belt to move the x-axis back and forth. So we're just a stepper motor and a belt away from having a working x-axis. Now, I'd like to get there with the y-axis. And I'm gonna run this thing with two separate stepper motors just cause NEMA 17s are pretty cheap and I don't have enough pillow block bearings to do it with one. I've gone ahead and I've cut out these two brackets on the plasma cutter. Let's get these bent up and installed. Got him. So I made a little bit of an oopsie here. As the real life machine drifts further and further away from the CAD model I designed, I've forgotten to adjust the parts that I'm still pulling off of the CAD model accordingly. So, these little center punches here that are supposed to be mounting holes aren't actually on anything. We're going with the lazy solution here. Just weld it. Now then, with our two stepper mounts installed, we just gotta get tensioners on each of these sides and we can basically make this thing move. Well, let's figure that one out. In order to mount the belt tensioners, I've cut out the exact same parts, just this time with no holes. And we're just gonna weld these in place again.
It was a commenter who suggested that I use isopropyl alcohol for tapping aluminum. And it works great. So, thank you, whoever you are. So as you can see, I got these parts installed and you just tension the belt by tightening up this socket cap screw. So before getting our stepper motors mounted and giving this thing a test, there's a few piddly little things that need to get done. One, I gotta install the cable chains. Two, I wanna get my limit switches mounted. So our first cable chain is just gonna install on the back here, like so, using this bottom plate that we made earlier. Now the one problem I have is of course, I didn't drill any holes in the frame for it because I didn't know where it was gonna go. So we got some more off kilter holes in our future. Beauty. Then the other side of this cable chain can just be mounted to this plate we made earlier. And then this plate mounts to the gantry using three number eight screws. Like so. Oh, would you look at that? That is pretty professional. Now we're not quite as prepared for this one, so we gotta add a couple little brackets. We need a piece tacked down here and a piece tacked right here that we can mount this thing to. So I just read a comment from a guy saying that these little drill taps work great in an impact. So, this is on you if it breaks. I hated every second of that. That was absolutely terrifying, but it worked! Alright, this is going to be tough. Got to fill it in a corner, straddling the camera, welding left-handed, standing up, filler wire in my teeth. Let's do it. You see how many times I dipped the tungsten? I feel like this was one of those times where it separates out the real welders from the posers. I guess I showed my true colors. I put another one on over here and I got no excuse for that. Besides, I didn't regrind the tungsten, but that's no excuse. It's okay, it's only holding up a piece of plastic. Now then, is this my shot at retribution? What just happened? And I think it just expanded in the vise from heat and popped out. <laughs> that was crazy. So much for retribution. The only thing that's got to go to the cutting head is this air hose. So I fished that through. Now we can install it. Beauty. I might need a couple more plates like this to hold it up, but for now this will do. So, as far as limit switches go, I'm gonna have to 3D print them and I don't wanna wait for that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these steppers and give this thing a test. I'll be back. It works! So, it works. I just threw this little Sharpie on here for demonstration purposes, but we had some fun with it, didn't we? So I didn't have enough timing belt to add the second stepper motor, but from the drawings that we made, it all looked pretty square. Either way, in the final build, I will have this second stepper motor installed because it makes it a lot easier to square up the gantry by adjusting where the steppers sit on the timing belt. From here on though, it's just limit switches, mirror mounts, enclosure, and electronics. So we're really getting close to a finished build here. Either way, if you like what you saw here, leave me a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.